on our journey to rediscover the disused stations along the Chicago Great Western Railway, from Chicago to Old Wine, Iowa. We left off in our previous video as we arrived in St. Charles, 15 miles west from Grand Central Station in Chicago, and just to the east of the Fox River in Kane County, Illinois. St. Charles was a major stop along the line, with tool sheds, maintenance crews, and water towers to feed the steam engines. It was a jumping off point from which westbound trains made the journey across the vast expanse of the U.S. Midwestern Prairie, traversing across northern Illinois and eastern Iowa. The St. Charles Station was located about 100 feet west of 9th Avenue, midway between State Avenue and Cedar Avenue, and on the south side of the tracks. The station structure is one familiar to us, the classic Chicago Great Western design circa the 1880s, about 20 feet wide by 50 feet long, employing the stick style, a type of Victorian design popular in the latter part of the 19th century. Coming into the station from the east, there was a long siding to the south of the tracks, extending eastward a few blocks beyond Illinois Route 64. Nearby the depot, there were multiple smaller railway buildings, including tool sheds, a supervisor's office, and section hand bunkhouses. In the earlier days of the railway, when the Chicago Great Western competed aggressively for passenger traffic, they had plans for a hotel and resort along the Fox River in order to lure patrons from the east and west, similar to what other railways were doing at that time such as the Aurora, Elgin, and Chicago Railway's Glenwood Park, further south. The hotel was never built, however, and the resort property was ultimately sold to the St. Charles Park District. Although passenger service along this stretch was shut down in the mid-1950s, the station building continued to serve the railway until the early 1980s. There were then efforts to preserve the station from the wrecking ball, to relocate it to a nearby railway museum, but that plan never materialized, and the depot was demolished in the mid-1980s. The railroad right-of-way still runs through this area, a mix of commercial and residential properties, and is owned by the Union Pacific Railway, as is the railway approach to the Fox River, and on both the east and west sides of the river. Where the station once stood is now inhabited by a light industrial building, housing multiple businesses, with the trackway right-of-way running behind the building to the north. The city of St. Charles has a long and interesting history, stretching back into the 1830s, shortly after Native Americans were pushed out of the area by settlers and state militia. It was originally dubbed Charleston, or Charlestown, but was renamed shortly thereafter as another Illinois town had previously secured the rights to that name. Nonetheless, St. Charles went on to become an important township and village in the early days of Kane County settlement. As new arrivals, mostly from U.S. East Coast states, took advantage of the multiple Native American trails that led through this location, including St. Charles Road, part of which later became Illinois Route 64. The town was originally platted in 1837, just a year after a bridge across the Fox River was built and it was legally incorporated just a few years later. The Fox River brought early prosperity to the town, as it was quickly dammed for commercial purposes, with sawmills and paper mills appearing on both sides of the river. Although there were early attempts at a railroad through the young city, these efforts never materialized, and it was not until the Chicago Great Western was built in the late 1880s that St. Charles was finally connected for freight and passenger service to Chicago to the east, and Sycamore to the west. A half mile to the west of the St. Charles Depot, the Chicago Great Western Trackway passes through residential neighborhoods, under multiple road bridges, and then quickly ascends from 2nd Avenue along an engineered ridge to a railway bridge spanning the breadth of the Fox River.
The origins of this bridge go back to the early 1850s, when St. Charles residents attempted to finance the Chicago, St. Charles, and Mississippi Railway, completing the piers and abutments built across the Fox River, before the new enterprise went insolvent, leaving the bridge footings as sad monuments to the enterprising affair. A few decades following, enter the Minnesota and Northwestern Railway, later to become the Chicago Great Western, which viewed the partially built bridge as a boon, and so purchased the former railway's right of way, and completed the construction of the 450-foot-long bridge, formally tying together their route from Minnesota and Iowa to Chicago. During the Second World War, as the Chicago Great Western's freight operations were considered strategically important, the Fox River Bridge was guarded day and night by local authorities. The original bridge served until the mid-1950s, when the railway added three new concrete piers in the Fox River and completely replaced the steel post and beam infrastructure. The Union Pacific Railway still owns this bridge, but it has leased the bridge, piers and all, to the city of St. Charles for a period of 99 years. About 20 years ago, St. Charles built this attractive covered pedestrian bridge alongside and beneath the trackway cleverly sharing the railway piers as part of the ultimate plan of linking together the east and west segments of the Great Western Trail, in much the same way as the 1880s Chicago Great Western Bridge linked together the two segments of the railway. There's something about this bridge which evokes the memory of the fictional Hogwarts. On the west side of the Fox River, the trackway descends more than a half mile to grade level, crossing over 12th Street, where a small and narrow Chicago Great Western Bridge survives. The right-of-way is still owned by Union Pacific. For a few years prior to 1900, there was another station named West St. Charles that came after the St. Charles Station, and based upon timetable mileage charts, it is likely to have been located somewhere in the vicinity of 12th Street, although its exact location is uncertain. The Great Western Trail pedestrian bridge is not as yet linked to the Great Western Trail, which lies one and a half miles to the west, and so you will need to get there by other means. From 12th Street, Union Pacific's right-of-way ownership continues on another mile to the west, where the former trackway finally meets up with the Leroy Oaks Forest Preserve, part of the Kane County Forest Preserve District. Just a short distance from the Leroy Oaks Forest Preserve entrance, about 700 feet west of Randall Road, on the south side of Dean Street, is the trailhead to the western segment of the Great Western Trail. A short trail from the parking area takes you to the former CGW Railway. From here, in western St. Charles, you can travel 17 miles along the bygone Chicago Great Western Passage, mostly on a crushed limestone path, right up to Sycamore's doorstep along its eastern edge. But for now, the next stop on the line after St. Charles was the Wasco Station, which is about three miles from here, and was almost five and a half miles from St. Charles, and which took the train about 12 or 13 minutes to cover.
We arrive at the former Wasco Station, just after passing over Old LaFox Road, or Illinois Route 81. The Wasco Depot was located about 150 feet to the west of Old LaFox Road, and on the north side of the tracks. The station was a wood frame structure, about 25 feet wide by 50 feet long, with the typical CGW stick-style design. There was a substantial siding to the south of the tracks in front of the station. Like many rural CGW stations, Wasco was a flag stop and served primarily as a milk stop for local dairy farmers. Many of these CGW rural stations, such as Wasco, also had a milk shed nearby, as well as a livestock pen for freighting cattle and pigs. In the late 1940s, the station building seems to have fallen into disuse. It was sold to the local American Legion chapter in about 1960, whereupon it was quickly moved from its original location to a new site, just 1,200 feet to the northwest, where it was then renovated and repurposed as the American Legion Chapter Hall for almost 40 years. In 1999, the structure began its third life, having been sold to the Campton Township government, and it became the Campton Township Community Center. Through these transitions and renovations, the original station was enlarged and enhanced, but you can still see the original Wasco station embedded as the north portion of the community center. The Wasco area of Campton Township was settled in the 1830s, just as St. Charles had been, the first post office being established in 1836. This agricultural area was primarily settled by immigrants from Massachusetts and New Hampshire initially, but then saw an influx of Swedish immigrants towards the latter part of the 19th century. The town proper, however, did not emerge until the coming of the Chicago Great Western in the late 1880s when the station provided a critical seed for the dairy farming community. The unusual name, by the way, Wasco, is very likely a shortened version of the name Awasco, a Native American word, as well as the name of a town in upstate New York, likely reused by immigrant farmers from New York and the East. The next station along the line is Lily Lake, a little over four miles to the west and about nine minutes by train. We pass over Illinois Route 47 and then Woolley Road shortly before arriving at the former Lily Lake Station. The Lily Lake Station was situated about 450 feet west of Woolley Road and to the north of the tracks. It was a wood frame structure, about 20 feet by 40 feet in size, with wide eaves and the typical CGW stick style Victorian ornamentation. It too was a flag stop and a milk stop with associated sheds and livestock pens. A considerable siding was also situated in front of the station to the south, extending a few hundred feet in both directions, and accommodated over 100 train cars. By 1950, the building saw little use, and in early November of 1953, 
a fire burnt the aging depot to the ground in the middle of the night. Within a few weeks, the railway decided against rebuilding or replacing the structure, as most passenger traffic was being shut down about this same time. Like Wasco and St. Charles to the west, the Lily Lake area was settled in the 1830s. The head of Fearson Creek was located nearby, in the form of a lake in a slough, which drew in settlers for the fresh water and the fertile alluvial soils. The first settlement in the area was named Campton, after an early settler, who also gave his name to the township. The Campton settlement saw the first post office being established in 1851. By the 1880s, this settlement became known as Canada Corners, owing to an influx of Canadian immigrants in the mid-1800s. Dairy farming was the principal economy of the community. With the coming of the Chicago Great Western Railway in 1887, a local enterprising farmer with the unfortunate surname of Outhouse saw the economic potential of the new railroad and so worked with the railway to plat a new town, replete with a new railway station on his own property and about a half mile south of Campton, christened Lily Lake in reference to the body of water about 1,000 feet south of the new station. He was apparently shrewd enough not to name the new town after himself. The post office was shortly thereafter moved from Campton to Lily Lake, as the Chicago Great Western was the primary means of mail delivery in the area. Within a few decades, the original settlement of Campton disappeared into Lily Lake, with the railway serving as a magnet for the local farming economy. The next stop along the line is Virgil, almost exactly three miles to the west, and about five minutes by train. Heading west towards Virgil, the railroad closely parallels Illinois Route 64 for the entire trip. We also pass over a branch of the Kishwaukee River within a half mile of reaching Virgil. As we come into the former Virgil Station, we pass over Meredith Road, situated along Illinois Route 64. The Virgil Depot was located about 70 feet west of Meredith Road and on the north side of the tracks. The station building was a modest wooden frame structure, perhaps 12 feet wide by 25 feet long, with gables on each end. If it looks familiar from watching our previous Chicago Great Western videos, you will have noticed the similarity to the Gretna Station, as it is almost identical in size and appearance. Like Gretna, it was a flag stop and a milk stop, serving the local dairy economy. The station was closed down by the mid-1950s and appears to have been demolished prior to 1964. Virgil is a small town in Virgil Township, just west of Campton Township, the town being initially referred to as Virgil Center. Like its neighboring communities to the east, Virgil Township was largely settled in the 1830s, primarily by immigrants from New York State, but then later by German immigrants. The first farmhouse in the community was built in 1839, followed by a tavern, a general store, a blacksmith, and a U.S. post office in the succeeding decade. Like communities to the east, this was largely a dairy economy, with the production of milk and cheese, and so in time a creamery was built to service the small community. Virgil Township, from which Virgil drew its name, was originally named Washington Township, then Franklin Township, but soon was renamed a third time as Virgil Township, likely after the Roman poet, and likely brought in with New York immigrants who were familiar with Virgil 
another town in upstate New York. Leaving Virgil, we'll head west to Richardson, which is about 2.7 miles in distance and about five minutes by train. Arriving at the former Richardson Station, we see one of the biggest changes of scenery from early days along the Great Western Line. The area to the immediate north of the original depot location is today overpowered by the Sycamore Speedway. With origins in the early 1960s as the Bob Joe Speedway, the fortunes of the regional race car venue waxed at the time when the Chicago Great Westerns waned. Before the advent of the Speedway, the Richardson Depot was located about 450 feet west of Old State Road and about 50 feet east of the Sycamore Speedway entrance road and on the south side of the tracks. The station was again of the classic Chicago Great Western Victorian stick style, about 20 feet wide by 40 feet long, with gabled ends, wide eaves, and a crushed limestone platform. Train timetables indicate that the Richardson station went out of use by about 1950. As of now, it is unclear when the station was taken down, but newspaper stories suggest that it was gone sometime prior to 1964. In the early days of the railway, Illinois Route 64 used to carry on northwesterly, crossing over the tracks just a short distance west of the Richardson station, at least until about 1930. Due to the oblique angle of the crossing, this was considered to be an especially dangerous crossing by local residents. In the 1930s, Route 64 was diverted west to fix this troublesome intersection. The community of Richardson was a relative latecomer in Virgil Township and only sprang into existence with the coming of the Chicago Great Western in 1887. It was very likely named for James Asa Richardson, a prosperous local farmer from Vermont who held a large amount of property in the area of the town where the station was to be situated. And so this may have been something of a vanity station, so to speak. But it nonetheless served the freight and travel needs of local farmers between Virgil and Sycamore for more than 50 years. The final stop on this journey is the Sycamore Station, which was a little more than five miles to the west and which took about 13 minutes to travel by train. We will not ride our bikes to there on the Great Western Trail, however, as the trail does not cross over the Kishwaukee River and hence into downtown Sycamore, where the Sycamore Station was once located. As such, this would necessitate riding along a busy and dangerous Route 64 for almost two miles. Not a great option. Instead, we'll make this final leg of the trip by automobile. Sycamore is a quiet and captivating small city, just on the outer edge, the Oort Cloud, of the ever-expanding Chicago metropolitan suburbia. It is the county seat of DeKalb County, Illinois, 
And although challenged on this point in its early history, even as recently as 1903 by the neighboring city of DeKalb, Sycamore has admirably fulfilled this important administrative responsibility for more than 180 years. The Chicago Great Western Railway entered Sycamore along its northern edge, where it once hosted a large industrious rail yard extending more than two city blocks from Sacramento Street to the west and Walnut Street to the east, and centered on Main Street, which runs north and south. In addition to two station houses, one for passengers and one for freight, the Sycamore Rail Yard included several adjacent freight houses, stockyards, grain elevators, water towers, section houses, coal stores, maintenance shops, and sidings that could hold more than 200 train cars. We drive north along Main Street until we reach Page Street, running east and west. The original Sycamore Passenger Depot stood about 150 feet to the west of Main Street and about 40 feet north of Page Street on the south side of the trackway. The station structure was of the classic Chicago Great Western design, Victorian stick style, with gabled end roofs and wide eaves. Being a major stop, the depot was substantial in size, about 80 feet long by 25 feet in width. The Sycamore Rail Yard also featured a freight station or house, which stood about 500 feet due east of the passenger station, or about 250 feet to the east of Main Street. Being for freight, this was a more modest building, about 50 feet long by 20 feet wide, and of wood frame construction. As the CGW moved away from passenger service, the passenger depot was used less and less, until it was ultimately decommissioned around 1951. At that time, a new freight station was built, about 70 feet long by 20 feet wide, and just a few feet closer to Main Street. This new station primarily served freight, but also included a small passenger waiting area, until all passenger service was shut down a short time later. Its utilitarian steel design was a far cry from the original Sycamore passenger station. If this new Sycamore freight station looks familiar to viewers, they wouldn't be wrong, as we saw a very similar design for the updated version of the Ingleton Depot in Episode 2. This is not a coincidence, as the same contractor, the General Contractor Company of Chicago, built the new Ingleton station at about the same time as the Sycamore station as well as a few other CGW stations. Although a very similar design, the dimensions of each of these steel structures may have varied from station to station. You can still see the 1951 CGW freight station, somewhat worse for wear, at 125 East Page Street in Sycamore, Illinois. Today, the location of the original passenger station has been transformed from a busy and bustling rail yard into a relatively quiet and pleasant empty field surrounded by light industry. At present, the former rail yard is home to a retired artist who is kind enough to give us a small tour of the area and tell us more about the rail yard's history. Unless you think that the original passenger station was lost to the wrecking ball, you will be pleasantly surprised to learn that the 1887 wooden station still stands today, only serving a new role, and just a short distance down the road. When the new freight station was built in 1951, the railway sold the old passenger station to a local citizen, Lyle Blyfus. Within a short time, Blyfus had the entire station cut into two sections and moved about two-thirds of a mile to the north along Main Street, to the northwest corner of Main Street and Maplewood Drive where it was given new life as a residence for his family. You can still see the old station house there today, metamorphosized into an attractive suburban house. As the DeKalb County seat, 
Sycamore enjoyed the business and economic prosperity that came with the role, being incorporated as a village in 1858 and as a city in 1869, shortly after the arrival of its first railway, the Sycamore and Cortland Railroad. With the advent of the Chicago Great Western Railway in 1887, Sycamore's future became even brighter, linking the city to Chicago to the east and Minneapolis-St. Paul, Des Moines, and Kansas City to the west. But being long rooted in farm country, Sycamore strongly retains its ties to agriculture, as well as some manufacturing. Over the past 50 years, Sycamore has become regionally famous for its annual pumpkin festival, which features a carnival and a parade. We'll end part three of our Chicago Great Western journey here in Sycamore. The Chicago Great Western did have a spur southward from Sycamore to DeKalb. We won't cover that spur in this series, but perhaps in a future video. Instead, we'll leave behind our bicycles and follow the Chicago Great Western Trail via automobile and head further west into the northern Illinois prairie, from Sycamore on our way to Byron, Illinois. We'll see you then.